Good morning. Good to see you today. Merry Christmas to you. Unless you come Wednesday night, I won't see you again till next Sunday if you come then. So Merry Christmas to you. I hope you have a good one. Open your Bibles to Galatians chapter 4. And I'm preaching this morning on the reason for the season. Why Christmas? What's it all about? Did, uh, did the Lord think we needed another holiday? Well, we don't have enough fiestas. We don't have enough days off work. So he gave us Christmas for that reason. No, no. No. There's a reason for Christmas. And if you listen to me today, you'll be able to tell somebody that reason. Some of you might could guess what the reason is right now. But I want you to know. So listen. Galatians chapter 4. Verse 4. Galatians 4.4. 4. But when the fullness of time was, son, was come, God sent forth his son, made. born of a woman, made of a woman, made of a woman, made, of a woman. made under the law. My printer is not working very good. Let's read that again. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. One more time, please, everybody. Galatians 4.4. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law the law. Strange Christmas reference. But I want you to understand why Christmas. The reason for the season. Let's pray. God, please bless this instruction, this portion of scripture, this preaching today. Please take it past the ear Pass the brain. Take it to the heart of the people in front of me. And may they realize that Christmas is all about them. Not that they might get a new toy, but that they might receive the eternal life through Jesus Christ. I pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Now, notice the phrase, in the fullness of time. You would have a good Bible knowledge if you just studied the times that things happened in the Bible. When we face tomorrow, we may have some hopes that certain things will happen tomorrow. But basically, we wake up and figure it out as the day goes by. God doesn't work that way. God has plans. And God 
works those plans out. Adunay plano o giyahang ginabuhat kining iyang mga plano. The birth of Jesus Christ did not surprise God. Ang pagkatao ni Ginoong Hesus Kristo wala kini nakasurpresa nato. He had a plan for Tumod many Dios years. Plano na niya kini sa daghang mga katuigan. All of us believed that Jesus Christ came. Everybody believes that. They may not believe the right thing about Jesus, but they believe that he came. But they don't know why. And the why is just as important as the fact that he came. Why would the Lord of the universe plan such an incredible truth as the birth of Christ when he knew that, that scientists and religious people would not believe it. He knew that. Uh, it's strange to me that some of you may have come this morning and you don't believe the truth about Jesus Christ. And I think almost everybody's been here before. Why would you come back to church if you don't understand why Jesus came? Now, I want you to notice the picture over here. It's not exactly the picture of Christmas. But it's true. Now that picture shows us that everybody is on their way to hell. Everybody. It shows you cities. And the arrows point over the, the cliff to hell. It shows you a church. And it's pointing over the cliff to hell. It shows me big business buildings. And the arrows point over the cliff to hell. Everybody is on their way to hell. Your neighbor your aunt, the Catholic priest, the nuns, Baptist preachers, good people, bad people, the people in the jail, the people in church, everybody, including you, are on your way to hell. That's a real problem. How, how is that ever going to change? Now the Bible tells us that when a man dies, he goes to hell. You die, you're in hell. The Bible says the rich man died. He was buried and in hell. He lift up his eyes, being in torment. What does that mean? That means if you died today, you got a real problem. Because before the sun goes down, you're going to be in hell. That's what the Bible says. It's a real problem. It's your problem. It's your neighbor's problem. It's the priest's problem. It's the Baptist pastor's problem. It's a problem you have to know about and deal with. Now, 
you say, yeah, but I keep the commandments. You do not. You're a liar. Nobody keeps the commandments. Now, you didn't hear that. Read my lips or read his. No body keeps the commandments. And it wouldn't do you any good if you did. Listen carefully. The commandments were not given to keep you out of hell. Look at me. I have broken all ten commandments. But I'm not going to hell. What? In Galatians 3 and verse 21. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. Now listen. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Now, God is smart. Ang Dios maalamon. And God gave us the Ten Commandments. But the law was never able to make anybody perfect. First reason is you can't keep the law. The commandments were given so that you and I would know that we can't keep them. And you know. That you don't keep them. But even if you did. They couldn't keep you out of hell. What? Now that's different from what most churches teach. The law cannot keep you out of hell. Now, if you have a Bible, turn to Hebrews. Toward, toward the back of your Bible. Hebrews chapter 10. For the law, having a shadow of things to come, and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. I told you. The law cannot make you perfect. Verse 2. Hebrews 10 2. For then... For then would they not have ceased to be offered. Because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. Look at me. Look at me. I deserve to go to hell. I'm broken all ten commandments. So have most of you. But I'm not going to hell. When I die, I'm going to heaven. There is no purgatory. There is no in-between place. That's a lie from the Catholic Church. The Bible says there's a heaven. There's a hell. When you die. You go to heaven. You go to hell. And the choice is yours. Will you say, well, if the choice is mine, I decide to go to heaven. Then you have to do what? 
God tells you to do to go to heaven. And you say, oh yeah, that's the commandment. That's not the commandment. To go to heaven is salvation. Salvation is a condition of the heart. And salvation is in a person. And it's not Mary. It's Jesus Christ. I deserve to go to hell. But I'm going to heaven. Why? Because I'm, because I'm such a good guy. I'm not a good guy. I deserve to go to hell. You're not a good person. You deserve to go to hell. But I know I'm going to heaven. Because I have Jesus Christ. In verse 3, Hebrews 10, 3. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Nothing. What was what, what the song that we sang this morning? What can wash away my sins? And you heard me yell many times. Nothing. 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 What can wash away my sins? Nothing. You can join the church. You can be baptized. You can try to keep the commandments. But you're already a sinner. When you're born, you're a sinner. So you're not perfect. You can't go to heaven unless you're perfect. God is perfect. He said, you have to be perfect before you can come live with me. God's home is perfect, heaven. And if God were to allow anybody that's not perfect into his home, his home would be defiled. Now, question is, how to make man perfect? Obeying the rules does not make you perfect. Because you've already disobeyed the rules. Now, uh, suppose I owed you a thousand pesos. And you said, uh, you need to pay me. I need the money. Then I said, uh, okay, okay, okay. I promise I'll never borrow money from you again. That make you happy? No, where's the thousand that you owe me? Don't worry about that. I'll never borrow from you again. That make you happy? You say no. Why not? I'm not going to ever borrow anything from you again. Yeah, but what, what about the thousand that you owe me? That's what people do with God. God says you have to be perfect, go to heaven. Man says, okay, okay, okay. I promise from now on, I'll keep all the commandments. Well, number one, you're not going to. And number two, what about the commandments you've already disobeyed? You lied before you were two years old. You took things that didn't belong to you before you were five years old. You hated 
And if you'd have had the power, you'd have killed before you were 10 years old. And so God says, uh, it's time to die. Um, where's your perfection? You say, oh, <laughs> I promise I'll never kill anybody else. I'll stop hating. I won't ever take anything that, belong, that doesn't belong to me. I won't ever lie again. God says, first of all, I don't believe you. And secondly, what, 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 what about the sins that before. You say, well, I'm going to be a good person from now on. Well, that's, that's nice. But what about the times when you sin? Now, look. Look at the picture again. Suppose somebody's on their way to hell And they get to the edge of the cliff and they see hell and they stand here and turn around and they say, I promise I'll never do it again. Right here they are. And they say, I promise I'll never do it again. Ask yourself the question. How are you going to get to heaven over on the other side? Well, yeah, but I promise I'll never do it again. You're already on your way to hell. But I promise I'll never do it again. Yeah, but how are you going to get to heaven on the other side? Now, it is totally unreasonable to think that there's any other way to get to heaven except for Jesus Christ. God loved his son. If God could have given you a commandment, and if you keep it, you have eternal life and you go to heaven, don't you think he would have done that? But there is no commandment. And God God's home is perfect. And in order for you to go to God's home, you have to be perfect. There is no religion. No water. No ritual. No saint. No government. No scientific or educational way. God surely would have provided that if he could have been. If he could have not sent his son. Now, remember I told you that the birth of Christ did not surprise God. God had a plan. You see, God knew that you, that you were going to sin. He didn't make you sin. You chose to sin. But in God's plan, He said, man's going to sin. And when they sin, I have no choice. I've got to send them to heaven. I can't let them come to heaven. Now, now listen, listen. God talking to his son. Now, you, you know, 
that hell was not made for man. Na ang impyerno hindi na para sa tao. It was made for the devil and his angels. And they deserve to go there. Kung ayon sila ng maadto dito sa impyerno. But when man sins, how can I bring them to heaven? It'll ruin heaven. Heaven will be just as bad as earth if I do that. Got to think. I got to plan something. All men disqualified themselves from heaven. And I'm a just God. And I'm a perfect God. Stop right there. If God wasn't perfect, He wouldn't be God. The fact that He's perfect means that He's God. If God wasn't perfect, would He? Would you want him for your God? He would be just like the man that lives next door to you. But God's thinking. I got a problem. I got to come up with a plan. But all men have sinned. So he came up with a plan. And he says, the wages of sin is death. So something has to die. So if you read in the Old Testament, when a man sinned, he brought a lamb. Oh. The lamb didn't sin. But the man said, God said, God said, let the lamb die in the place of man. Man didn't care. That's fine with him. But God is a just God. God is a righteous God. And he said, that won't work. God's thinking. And he says, he said, that doesn't satisfy justice. Okay. Suppose somebody broke into your home and they killed your mother. She didn't do anything wrong, they just killed your mother. And the person that did it went to court, he was arrested, and you go to court, and the judge says, did you mean to kill this man's mother? Oh no, I'm a good person. So the judge says, since this person is a good person, even though they killed your mother, we'll just let them go. Okay, if you didn't mean to kill her, then you can go. Are you satisfied with that? You say no! Somebody needs to pay! You're not satisfied. And God's not satisfied. You've sinned. And God's justice has to be satisfied. And God said. An animal that didn't sin. That just, that just, that, that's, just, that's just not good enough. And God said in Hebrews 10, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. 
sa ka sa kanding o sa mga baka makakuha sa sala. It doesn't satisfy me. Dili ka na makatagbaw nako. And I'm a just God. Matarong kung adios. And he said, he, he's, he's thinking. Somebody has to pay for that. Now listen carefully. If you pay for your sin, that's where you pay for it. In hell forever. You want to pay for your sin? You say, but God is merciful. Yes, God is love. God is merciful. But God is just. God always does things the right way. Now God's still thinking. Okay, we got a problem. Everybody's going to hell. And if they offer a sacrifice, it still doesn't make them perfect. They still know they're a sinner. And they know they can't come to hell. What we need, God thinking. What we need is a perfect human that will die in the place of the sinner. So God goes looking. He looks on the mountains. He looks down in the valley. He looks in the Philippines. He looks in the America. He looks in China. He looks in Russia. He looks over all the earth. And nobody perfect. God's thinking. We need somebody perfect that would willingly die and pay the wages of sin for you. For you. You're the one that should die. But if you die in your sin, there will be hell to pay. So God's thinking. He's thinking about you. How can I get them made perfect? And God says, he's still thinking. God says, you know, even if I found somebody that was perfect, which I can't, they wouldn't be willing to die for somebody that's not perfect. It's a real problem. Ask you a question. Think, you. You. Think. If you were perfect, would you die for her? You don't have to die. You've got eternal life because you're perfect. Would you die for him? Would you die for your brother? Would your mother die in your place? Let's, let's make it a little bit more personal. You're guilty. They catch you. They put you in prison up here. The judge says, you have to serve 10 years in prison for what you did. Unless you can find somebody that loves you enough 
to serve those 10 years for you. Your sister's in jail for 10 years. Do you love her enough to go to the jail? And let her go out free. And you stay for 10 years. Nobody loves you like that. Nobody. Not you, not your sister, not, not your mother. Nobody. And God's thinking. And he said, look, I got a real problem. God's thinking. Everybody's going to hell. I can't just forgive them all because they're guilty of sin. The Bible says God, God will not at all acquit sin. That's not just. It's like, it's like the person that killed your mother. And the judge just says, just forget everything. Just let her, let him go. It's not right. It's, and you wouldn't be satisfied with that. And God's not satisfied with that. So God's thinking. An animal's not good enough. It won't take away their sin. It won't make them perfect. It won't change their conscience. Everybody knows they're a sinner. And if they pay, they'll have to go to hell. What can I do? What can I do? I've got to have a perfect human. I've looked and there is none. And if there was one, they wouldn't be willing to die for the sake. God's thinking. He says, you know what? The only thing that I know to do. I'll have to do it myself. God says the only person that can fix this problem. Is me. And so the Bible says. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, 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 which he hath purchased with his own blood. Now God says, oh, I got to figure this out. Everybody's a sinner. Everybody's going to hell. Unless there's a perfect human being. Willing to die in the place of a sinner. The only person that can solve this problem is me. So God's thinking. And he says. I have to become a human being. And when I do I'll be a perfect human being. Got a problem though. If I have an earthly father. That makes me a sinner. Because that's where we get our sin is from our father. So God says, I got another problem. I can't have a human father. And yet I've got to become a human. 
Wait a minute. I'll do a miracle. And I'll be born of a woman who never had relations with a man. That's it! So the Bible says, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in the glory. That's it. I'll become a human through a woman that never knew a man. And the thought comes to God. Nobody would ever believe that. Because it's not scientific. And God's thinking and he said, I did everything else without science. I'm going to do this without science. Where was science when God created the heaven and the earth? Where was science when God parted the Red Sea and a million people walked on dry ground? Where was science when Jesus paid his taxes by bringing a fish to shore that had a coin in its mouth? And Peter took the coin. And it was the exact amount of the taxes. You say, you don't really believe that, do you? I believe it. Do you believe it? Do you know the Bible says if you don't believe the first verse in the Bible you won't believe in the virgin birth. And if you don't believe in the beginning God created heaven and earth you won't believe that God rose from the dead. So I choose to believe it. God says he's thinking. He's thinking. I love what I made. I love my creation. I love human beings. And I want to show them that I love them. So I'll come and become a human. And I'll be a perfect human. And I'll show them how much I love them. For God so loved that He gave His only begotten Son. You understand? His Son was God manifest in the flesh. And God says, I'll be the perfect human being. And I'll die for their sins. God dies? Yeah. The Bible says, greater love hath no man than this. That a man lay down his life for his friends. May he show them the next picture. Now, wait a minute. Go back. Wait, we're all going to hell. It's a real problem. God solved the problem. Go ahead. Hallelujah! That's it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but should have everlasting life. Nobody 
Nobody loved you like Jesus. He is the one that provided the way. Now, here's the purpose of it all. Why Christmas? <coughs> What's the reason for the season? In Genesis chapter 18. Genesis. That be far from thee to do after this manner to slay the righteous with the wicked and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee shall not the judge of all the earth do right. And he did. <laughs> Glory. God did right. By God's own laws. He's got to judge righteously. Now listen. God said. Everything that he made. The earth. The plants. The dogs. The ants. The humans, the stars, the air, everything God made is held together by God's word. What does that mean? The chair that John's sitting in is made up of atoms. Tiny little particles you can't see. That's what Hebrews 1 says. If you went to 7th grade science, you know that's true. Here's an atom. Here's an atom. That's what makes up that chair that John's sitting in. And they come together and another atom and another atom and another atom and another atom and they make up that chair and that's why John can sit on it because they're held together but what holds those atoms together God said his word the fact that God always tells the truth. He always keeps his word. That's what holds you together. And if God did anything wrong, anything, the entire universe would disappear. You say, you really believe that? I really believe that. If the Lord ever did one thing wrong, one little lie, that's all over. Nothing in the world would be there, including the world. Now, God is love. Thank God, God is love. But just because He's love doesn't mean that he's not righteous. And if, if God is righteous, then you and I should go to hell. You say, yeah, but God loves us. But God is righteous. But he loves us. But he's righteous. But he loves us. That's why Christmas. He provided the way. Not just his love. But his righteousness. God. Died. On the cross. For you. Well, let me ask you one more question.
Look real close. Is that you? Is that you? You say, I'm too young to die. Okay, let's go back. Is that you there? Are you in those buildings? Here's a church. Are you in that church? Is that you? Is that you? Is that you? Or are you here? Is that you? You just got saved. Is that you? Or you've been saved for 20 years. Is that you? Are you on the cross? Or are you on your way to hell? That's why Christmas. Let's go back to one thing and we're done. God is merciful. He's love. But he's righteous. And he's just. So God did this for you. In the fullness of times. At the right time. God sent his son. His son was perfect. And his son was willing. To die for you. And he did. And there it is. And if you're on your way to hell. All you have to do. Is get up on the cross. You'll be okay. How do you do that? Two things. Repentance toward God. And faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance. What is that about? That means you're on this side over here. And with everybody else, you know you, you're going to hell. And you say, God, I believe in Jesus Christ. I know I deserve to go to hell. Put me on that cross. You know that can happen today? If you tell the Lord, I know I'm going to hell. Please put me on that cross. It'll be the best Christmas you ever had. Let's bow our heads. Let's bow our heads. We'll stand. And we're going to sing. And the altar is open. What that means is, you know the best place to get saved? is right here. You know the best time to get saved? Right now. Would you come and ask God to put you on the cross? Tell Him you don't want to go to hell. Thank Him for His love for you. And ask God to put you on that cross. By faith. The altar's open. We'll sing. If you need help, just raise your hand.